Today's episode of the podcast marks the start of a very special five-part series looking ahead to the PX Plus Festival Mark II. This festival, run by the hospitality industry and for the hospitality industry, takes place between midday on Saturday the 17th of August 2019, right the way through to midnight on Monday the 19th of August. Across these five episodes, we'll hear from key members of the Ops team talking about their own origins, how they got involved with the PX Plus movement, and talking about their areas of the festival and what you can look forward to over the weekend. What better place to start, though, than with Katie Bone, co-director of the PX Plus Festival. Here, she looks back at the 2018 inaugural PX Plus before we look ahead to the 2019 Ops team and what they bring to the party and doing another virtual tour of the 2019 location, which is the same as last year, the fabulous Duchess Farms. Enjoy. PX Plus last year was a whirlwind. It was over too quickly. It was a shitload of planning with an amazing bunch of people over 200 headliners the support from the industry was phenomenal how do you even start to work out all of the things that came out of that and how to move it forward that's been our biggest challenge and knowing that we want to do it again and continue doing it annually but not exactly the same it's not about repeating what we did it's about taking that and building on it and getting more people involved and celebrating more Um, headliners and people that are doing you know their day-to-day jobs within the industry that's been a challenge and also the excitement and what keeps us awake at night wondering who to approach wondering if the people that are approaching us are not necessarily interesting enough because it's not all about being interesting it's if they have a story are they authentic enough do they fit with the px plus ethos of celebrate collaborate share and change You know, I'm very much a, a stories guy. You know, I love stories. I think it's you know, everyone knows stories are, are super important with with engagement. But just for you know, some of the the numbers people out there. I mean, are you are you able to give any more data about like again? You know, that might help just to let people get their heads around. You know, like what we said what the fuck did happen <laughs> last uh, last August. Okay, so let's get the boring stuff out of the way. Uh, 1,500 guests on site over three days, over 200 headliners, uh, 45 international chefs, um, producers, bartenders, suppliers, sommeliers, farmers, knife forgers, you name it, they were there. Um, Three days of hospitality celebration collaboration and sharing across 20 areas we had 20 areas at duchess farms last year and the support the the interest over 200,000 hits on our website in the first nine months was just phenomenal for us um it just shows that we've kind of hit a we've hit a nail we've hit a gap um, and we want to continue to try and fill that gap with amazing um headliners and content yeah i mean i I was there i saw a lot of that firsthand but i think it's it's useful you know to just know what was the what were the actual numbers that kind of came through and uh I, i think as you came in saying really i think it's it's impossible to quantify the impact you know how do you how do you know how you change somebody's life or change their career i think you know in our modern age of measuring everything some things will remain un- unknowable kind of if you like um but i think you know to kind of move it forward a little bit i'd just like to kind of share with you you know what i'm seeing as well you know because i think it's, it's really interesting for me that your second year in you know you've got ambitions to to make it better you know whatever whatever that actually means and, and keep it moving forward and, and evolving could you give us a bit of an insight as to sitting here in you know May 2019, still around three months from the from the new from the Fest Festival, <laughs> exactly in seconds and minutes? Um, what does the what does the day to day look like now? 
in terms of the people you've got around you and yeah how how does that work how how the hell do you go about pulling something as epic as this together px is incredibly lucky that we still have um an awesome operations team we couldn't do it without um the help support input creativity passion hard work of um an amazing group of talented professionals and I'm really happy to say that they're all still involved in some context or some capacity um, myself and Isabel Kelly are driving um, the kind of schedule and the operational side forward Isabel was heavily involved last year with our bakery our producers our suppliers the courtyard and um, between her and myself we you know, I, I don't like the formal structure kind of thing, but we are um, the co-directors and we have a wider team of support to make the festival happen. So Isabel and I very much split up the day-to-day, uh, all the nitty-gritty, the, the fun, creative bits of um, headliners and content and planning and dinners and lunches and tastings and workshops, um, as well as the you know the not so fun parts is the logistics and the the water and the waste and the toilets and all of that that needs to be done it it's hard it, it's hard i'm not gonna lie it's a constant 24 7 um job to produce px at the level that we want to and we wouldn't want to be doing it um any less certainly not any less than we did it last year and like i say we want to make it better but not in terms of the bigger and better necessarily just making sure that everything we're doing has a story behind it has a reason to be there um the people that we're working with are authentic and honest and and passionate and really fit with px plus that's that's really what's at the heart of why we're all doing it and why we're working so hard to to make round two happen in in a few months time just as we did last year at px plus we've got professional industry experience people heading up the various areas whether it's um, the px plus bar which um, jennifer doherty julian fishu and jan konetsky are all working together to create whether it's the px plus restaurant and dining experiences that johnny bone and sean williams and a team of amazing volunteers have already come on board um, to help make that happen the pastry kitchen which is new to this year We've got someone in each area who's responsible for that area. Camilla does our Rest and Rejuvenate lineup. Um, it, it goes on and on. Charlotte's doing our um, entertainment, so all of our music, our talks, um, a few ad hoc things that we're throwing in this year, kind of wow experiences that people aren't expecting. That all falls under Charlotte. So being able to have people that we trust who work not necessarily the same as us because it's not all about that but they have the um diligence and and the work ethic to to get things done to the standard that we expect um it's a conversation everyone's part of that um and we couldn't do it do it without those people they're invaluable to to making px plus happen martha's leading our operations looking after our food traders our logistics uh, alexia is helping with our guest headliners and our chefs and the programming and scheduling um, and then even wider to the producers and the suppliers that are integral to making it happen whether it's jane and ian makara um, julian brown justin dayton all of these people um are phenomenal in the support that they give which it goes above and beyond a normal um supplier producer um customer relationship um they really believe in px plus as much as we do they've been there from the beginning and they're integral to making it better than it than we could ever imagine it to be it's cool that you've got those people coming back but then you're also using the same venue so same the duchess farms uh yeah could you talk a bit about that again as a location bring that bring us sort of up to date around yeah how it worked last year as a location and then also maybe you know are there things that you're going to do differently in terms of using that as a space this year that you kind of you know that you move towards from learnings from last year we really couldn't wish for a better partner um, in Duchess Farms, working with Oscar Harding, sixth generation farming family, um, and um, Max, who works alongside Oscar in the day to day, Oscar's brother, George. To say that um, we couldn't have done it without them is an understatement. The amount of effort and um, 
the can-do attitude that they have. Um, we were incredibly lucky to have a partner that was so committed to the project in the first year. Is in all my years of events and, and experience in the industry, um, it's very difficult to find people that are so on your wavelength that they're willing to do pretty much anything to to get the festival to where it needed to be and and working with them it was a no-brainer that we were going to hold it at Duchess Farms again this year the site itself is just stunning um, natural environment close enough to central London to be accessible but obviously far enough away that when you're there you are in the countryside and you can really um, shut off from from where you've come from or where you work in the day-to-day the beauty of holding it at Duchess Farms when we've already done one year is that we've learnt an incredible amount. We didn't get it perfect um, last year by, by any means and there's a lot that we want to improve on. We've had a lot of conversations in the last few months around space planning, around what areas to um, make a footprint bigger, what areas to move entirely. And guests will notice who joined us in the first year that it will look different. The courtyard is staying as a central space um, but the restaurant um, the kitchen the stage is all moving um, to become more integrated it's really important to us that that ethos of collaboration and sharing is is represented in the actual space itself not just in the content of the schedule and the talks and the way people are interacting but the actual physical location of the space so we're integrating things a lot more and making the flow a lot better the entrance is moving um we are increasing the rest and rejuvenate space and making it more accessible a bigger spa area more massage and more holistic um treatments looking at the support side the px plus listens how we can really use that to support the industry support the guests that are going to be there if they want the opportunity to speak to someone at any point in the festival people will be on site 24 7 there'll be a number that they can text and arrange a, a meeting um very informal and it can be a talk about anything from mental health to financial support business advice whatever is needed that was very important to us to include as an area a roaming area this year uh, a central px plus bar um, last year we had the wine tent which was incredible but this year we want to again collaborate bring together all of those beverage elements and have everyone working together so the way to do that was to have a main px plus bar the bakery is tripling in size as a as a headline in the central courtyard with the fires we're keeping the crop circle table because it was such a hit last year and including a roaming um, canal boat for a vodka bar that Vessel Vodka are navigating from central London all the way to the farm which is just mental and incredible and I can't wait to to be on it as well with everyone Um, so lots of um, areas returning from last year and also a few new spaces as well a secret guest chef table um with amazing headliners cooking and a a, a new pastry kitchen with a whole pastry lineup i mean i really take my hat off to you i think doing and organizing something like that last year you were very much going into the unknown you know it was it was very much uh felt like a leap of faith from from the outside and it felt like it was a, a huge success and um, I would imagine though, that, that that's that's changed you and I guess has changed your idea of what PX can be and, and you know your, your kind of maybe your ambition about it or just your relationship with it so I'm just curious yeah maybe you're just teeing it up with that kind of thinking about PX as a kind of a having a life of its own being an, an, its own separate entity what, kind of what does that mean to you at, again at this stage and, and looking forward when you start a project like PX plus you always have the dream that it will turn into its own thing and the whole team and myself are cred- incredibly proud that that has happened but the other side of that is that it has a life of its own so now it's almost not under our control yes we're all part of it but it has an identity and it has a space it's created something bigger than all of us and that's amazing but also scary and challenging um all at the same time how do you take that that magic that passion that essence of what we created as in everyone coming together it wasn't one person it wasn't the ops team it was the fact that all of those people came together at that moment and all of the headliners and all of the support that we are forever indebted to all of those people that supported it and every single guest that came to the first year how do you take that and build on it because it doesn't belong to any one of us it's a collective it's a community and that's really what it's designed to be so how do we then look at it 
objectively and say, well, PX Plus needs to move more into this arena. It needs to be more collaborative. It needs to be more supportive. It needs to be for the industry in the truest sense of the world, the word. It's not us controlling it. It's not us dictating. Yes, we've got areas that are really at the heart of what we do. The PX Plus, let's talk about its schedule. The PX Plus listens. But how do we really give it to the industry and let the industry be PX Plus? That's our biggest challenge. And that's what's also, like I said, most exciting. And that's what we're working on for 2019 and for further afield. What's the potential of PX Plus and what direction do, do we want it to take? But do we also feel that it's taking? What direction does the industry need it to take? That's more interesting to, to us. Hi guys, as promised, here are the details on that very special PX Plus collaboration with Interpreting Wine. They have kindly made available to my listeners a very special 75% discount on the full price of the weekend ticket. So rather than the £120 full price, you'll be paying just £30 for the whole weekend. I've left below the link by which you can sign up for this. But just so that you know, that £30 will include access to all areas, access to all the talks, a free daily breakfast, a free camping pitch if you bring your own tent, access to the camping facilities including the shower and toilets, free car parking if needed, and a free shuttle bus service from the nearest train station which is Sawbridgeworth. As you can tell, this is an absolute steal, so if you're in any doubt at all about booking, then this is the time to do so. They've also made it equally as easy to book this price. All that you need to do is to follow the checkout and where prompted, use the discount code PXPOD at checkout. So in summary, deal of the decade, a 75% discount on the weekend ticket price, which takes it from £120 to £30. Book using the link below in the description. And at checkout, simply use the discount code PXPOD. Thank you so much, Katie. It was a real pleasure sitting down with you. So great to get your recollections on last year's festival before we do it all again. As ever, I've left the contact details and main social media handles for PX Plus below. And in addition, I've left the special booking link and details of the discount code. And of course, I would love to have you following along with me on social media, where I'm at Interpreting Wine on Instagram and Facebook, at Wine Podcast on Twitter, and email hello at interpretingwine.com. See you next time in episode 272, where I sit down with Camilla Rooney from the Rest and Rejuvenate Ops team.